We'll judge you by the company you keep. The presidency warns Southwest agitators. And we'll give Jonathan a chance to contest in 2023 if he joins the APC, says the ruling party. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Conn. Yoruba Nation agitators have been threatened by the federal government. This was in reaction to a protest held by the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, NINAS, an umbrella body for self-determination groups in the country at the United Nations headquarters in New York, in the United States. Now, members of the self-determination groups representing the Yoruba, uh, Southeast, Southwest, and uh, the Middle Belt were seen displaying placards with different inscriptions and chanted anti-oppression songs. They were also seen chanting, we want the Yoruba nation now, declare independent Biafra now. And some of the, pro some of the protesters held Yoruba nation and IPOB flags. The presidency, however, faulted the Yoruba nation agitators for keeping association with the prescribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOB. In a statement, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, the federal government also threatened to judge the Yoruba nation agitators by the company they keep, saying that no one will take them seriously. Well, joining us to discuss this is Obin Nachuku, he's a legal practitioner. Uh, we also have Babashola Adegui, uh, he's a political analyst, and Ni Babade is an international journalist. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. So I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to start with you, um, Babashola. It's interesting that um, the presidency is, is saying this again. Um, the presidency has said over and over again about these agitators uh, that nobody will, will take them seriously. And now they're retracing that they will judge them by the company they keep. What exactly do you think the, the federal government is um, referring to? Well, when I heard we will judge you by the company you keep, it sounded as a threat or a way of blackmailing a group of people agitating for self, uh, what you call, or you get. So, when I heard that, I went for that to see why. And I heard that because the Nigerian government has declared IPOB as a terrorist organization. So for the Yoruba nation or agitators to be in alliance with the IPOB, then they will also regard us as the Yoruba nation agitators as terrorists. And that is exactly what I discovered. And the first question I asked myself, there is going to be a United Nations General Assembly today. Everybody was aware before today. Anybody can go there and agitate. Coming together against the government or agitating for self determination, yeah. you get, or self determination. I don't see anything wrong in doing that. But the first question is. Is IPO a terrorist organization? But it has been declared uh, a terrorist by organization the by the government, government in Nigeria, so they do see them as a threat to the government. So are they really wrong in saying that you associating with people they term as terrorists um, means that you might just be judged in the same light? Well, from, from their own handbook, yes, they have every right to declare them as a terrorist organization, as even the global organization for allying with them. But the truth is, when we are talking of terrorist organization, we are, uh, it, IPOB is not. All, every one of them, both IPOB and the Yoruba Nation dictators have the same interest. And what is that? This, what is that interest? It is the self-determination. It is about having their own nations. So if you are now saying, because of that, you want to uh, raise your hammer on the, Yoruba, uh, on the Yoruba dictators, then definitely you are not being reasonable in what what agitation is all about. Mm -hmm. It is all about one thing that this government has even refused to realize is this. When people are agitating, listen to them, invite them. How many of these people has this government actually invited for uh, maybe a poll to even hear them out? Every, there is agitation from left, right, now it is Middle East. 
Uh, uh, sorry, middle, middle belt. belt. Mm -hmm. Now it's middle belt. Before you know it, maybe some other part. Then it means that the government in control of this of this nation is not really getting it. It is not about declaring some people attacking a group of people. No, it is not all about or trying to blackmail. Well, are you saying that the government is picking and choosing who they want to attend to or those they want to hear out? Well, for me, the government is only interested in those they want to hear out. If not... Who are it, these people? If, well, there are people that are talking about the interests of the government, the pro-government, the people that will make the government happy. Those are the people this government is actually interested in. Once you, the government discovers that you are anti-government or you are a critic or saying something that does not go down well with them, they see you out, out, on, on, on the opposite side of the... Of, it, of the something of the ring. So if this government is doing this, that definitely you can all see what happened with the media when the media houses started disclosing a lot of things happening. We know how the NBC sent mail to every one of them to stop uh, to stop uh, what's it called, but casting some things in, in, in respect of this of the government. How they stop the how they stop the media houses from using social media. It is all about them. Hmm. Interesting. Let me come to you, Baisalbina. You are a lawyer, and um, it's interesting because a lot of people ask, is it unlawful to um, ask for secession within a country, an entity like Nigeria? Uh, is it illegal um, to ask for self-determination? And for the case of IPOB, they have been, of course, that's what we said, um, been prescribed as a terrorist group. Um, so why should the government be... Um, criticized for saying that they should not be associated with, uh, rather that the Yoruba nation and the Middle Belt um, groups should not be associating with IPOP. Okay, um, first thank you for having me. Um, the question as to whether or not um, uh, self-determination is unlawful, I, I think it's very clear. The law the Nigerian law, even international law, supports self-determination. Let's look at it from this angle. It's like you, a man who has, uh, who married a wife, maybe um, or more wives, and uh, one of the wives uh, wakes up one morning and, and says, I'm tired, I do not want to marry again. The law has provided the way or the leeway through which uh, such a marriage can be dissolved. And the law says you have to go through the court or through either through the high court or through the customary court in order to dissolve the marriage. The same thing applies to a, a country where you have uh, a dominance or ethnic nationalities in, the, in a particular country who uh, that may want to uh, self determine or may want to have a separate nation. I do not think that there is anything wrong in, in even uh, uh, tribes in Nigeria saying that uh, they want a separate nation. It is expected when you have a country that has more than 500 or more ethnic groups, according to some of the books that I read, there is bound to be altercation. There is bound to be disagreement. People will disagree, even to the point that they will say that I do not want to belong to the to that particular nation. It is not. It's not something that uh, that one will not expect in a in a union of many nations or union of many people. But the problem there is uh, is the way federal government is handling it. I think federal government is uh, is looking at it from the angle that we are government. These people are against government. No, they are not against government. All that federal government needed to have done or needs to do is to be Nigerians, whether it's from the southwest, whether it's from the middle belt, whether it's from the southeast. They are all, all these geopolitical zones are, are uh, the, the makeup of Nigeria. So anytime but, 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 you have Salvina, something like that, the best thing I'm, to I'm do so would have been you. to set up a commission. I, it's me? even surprising that Nigeria does not have, have an agency that deals with some of these protests. 
that deals with disagreements. A nation like Nigeria that has so many tribal uh, groups and all that needs to have a full agency that should be looking into some of these things. Okay, look at, we have uh, the constitution. Nigerian constitution tries to solve that problem by one, inserting in the constitution, allowing for federal character, so that there will not be a dominance of uh, one particular ethnic group in the affairs of government. How has government been able to implement federal character? There is a commission, but how uh, has Nigerian government been able to to ensure that the Federal Character Commission does the work. And in our constitution, I think, in that section 16 or so, I empowers government to redistribute wealth after a certain period of time. Because the law anticipated that after a certain period of time, some few people that may be close to government or close to governance or have relationship with people that are in power, they may have either true government pattern that they acquire so much wealth that Government needs to come in to redistribute wealth. The so, constitution also says the wealth should not be concentrated, concentrated in the hands of a few. But government, Nigerian government, not the, really per se, this present government. Successive so, regimes have failed Nigerians, and that have given rise to the agitations for um, agitations from some of the ethnic groups in Nigeria. The truth remains that that uh, uh, to self-determine, it is, it is an order that the law allows. And again, okay. looking at it from the point, even when the uh, IPOP started, all that they were asking is referendum. It's still a process of law. Referendum is what the law provides, that whenever a particular group wants to, wants an autonomy, that particular group will go through is via Having okay. a referendum, okay. which will show whether or not they support it. All right. Let me go to Babade. Um, you're, of course, an international journalist. And um, just as you all know, the United Nations is going to have the General Assembly and our president is going to be in attendance. And um, there are lots of things that have happened in the country that has um, given the the world, you know, uh, uh, our attention of sorts. Um, we had the NSAS in 2020. Um, and the whole world was looking at Nigeria. And now we're dealing with banditry. Um, the U.S. Senate has withheld uh, sales of some of the equipments that we need to fight terrorism, uh, pointing fingers to human rights abuses. But I, I'm, t I'm going somewhere. Um, there has to be a reason why we're having all of these non-state actors creeping up from different parts of the country. Now, IPOP has been there for a long time. We all know this. Uh, but now we're seeing more and more agitations from different parts of the country. So let's talk about the reason why these non-state act actors keep increasing in their number and why we're going to keep having these protests outside the United Nations from today up until tomorrow and maybe in the days after. Well, I, I can hardly hear you, but uh, I Oh my goodness, I think that we, we, we have a poor connection from you, so we'll try again. Uh, maybe we'll just get you on the telephone. Uh, but I'm going to come back to you, Baba Shala, because we're unable to get Babadi. Um, let's talk about the reason why we're having these agitations, which we are, we're having a Sunday bowl. And Namdi Kano has been around for a long time, um, even under the Jonathan administration. We had Radio Biafra, um, a rogue radio station. And now we're seeing the Middle Belts Forum. We're seeing a lot more people creeping up and having a say. Let's talk about the underlying reasons as to why we're here. Well, the, the main reason why we are here is because of the nepotism. Yeah, whereby the government is more interested in one part of Hillary, in one part of the nation, than the others. If you look at the ministers, if you look at uh, the, the people, heads of Parastata's agency, those in ministry or holding one position or the other, you will discover that they are being occupied by majorly people from a particular tribe. So when the the for example the iPod iPod actually started because they discovered because they they felt that they are not being recognized in Nigeria. So they wanted a situation whereby they will be recognized whereby okay we are not interested in let, let us go. So they, that is. The but then again, IPOP started under 
it was it gained more prominence under the Jonathan administration, an administration uh, headed by a governor from the South South. So is this really a Buhari administration problem? It is not about Buhari administration problem. If we are to look at it right from the 1960, the, 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 I think the people from uh, the Southeast actually had only one president. Well, one president that actually came from that Southeast. For the past 1960, up to this now, we're talking of about 15 years or 61 years now. Now, for good 61 years, a particular part of nation has ruled. And just once, and any time we are talking about who is going to be president, we don't discover that the South East is not being considered for the position of that president or any of those high positions. So they felt that they are not welcomed. But are there not better ways? Because I was going to ask that question to Barista Chiku. Um, are there, is it not about the way that we're going about it that is making the federal government respond? Let's not forget, the reason why we had the Twitter saga is, first and foremost, Mr. President's tweet and the fact that people reported that tweet and saying it was sensitive, it was triggering, et cetera, et cetera. Now we don't have Twitter in Nigeria. Um, but, but we were asking for the president to speak on issues of insecurity, and, and the president spoke. It didn't go down well with a lot of people. Uh, they felt targeted. Yes, that's a, a different conversation. But how are we going about it? The way we're going about it, the conversations that we're having, the push and the shove, is it being done violently? Could that also re be the reason why government is responding the way they're responding? Well, for any good government, for any good government, there must be an interest of the needs of the people. You need to find out why people are protesting, agitating, or making a request. It is a matter of they are calling for your attention. And once they don't get that attention, they move to the next step. And that is the problem, not only with this government, just like I told you, we know about the mass up that was in existence before this hype up came in. I think this hype up came in in a way, I think, towards the end of uh, uh, Jonathan's government. If I can remember, towards the end of Jonathan's government. So they came in such a way that to pass a message to the government. But the government is only any to that. And um, before you know it, they, were start, they started spreading, increasing in numbers. And before you know what was happening, they already have the strength, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. A good government would have invited someone, the leaders of, the leaders of HYPO, sit down, let's talk. But we have found ourselves in a situation, at this as a nation, whereby once we have a leader in the government, it, the, 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 such leader is not interested in the reason, what is interested in is to keep such group, to keep them mute, to ensure they are not speaking out to their mind. Because they see every protest, every agitation as anti-government, and which of course is not so. Hmm. Baisa Chuku, can you come in here? Because I, I, like I said, I wanted to ask you that question initially. How we're going about it? Now, we, we, let me just um, cast your mind back to how Namdi Kanu was arrested. Before he was arrested, uh, while he was in Nigeria and, and arraigned in court, uh, and before he jumped bail, we saw what happened. We saw what happened in his hometown. Now, let me also take your mind to what happened in the Boho residence, which is still a matter that's in court, so we might not necessarily discuss that. Uh, could it be something in the way that they are enunciating their demands, or could it be something in... The way that they're regrouping, I, I don't know, recruiting people to, to be part of, you know, their groups or their agitation. I'm trying to understand why the government would first and foremost prescribe IPOB and then now is saying to the Yoruba nation, uh, we might just judge you by the company that you keep, meaning that in no time we might just group you with those terrorists and probably be, t you know, t termed as ter terrorists also in the nearest future. Uh, but let us let us look at the manner in which they're going about these agitations. Okay, um, let me let me begin by saying that um, yes, if we look at the manner in which or the pattern or the tactics adopted by 
or being used by the agitators. We may find some some few areas where I think uh, I would say that uh, they shouldn't have gone that way. But again, let us also look at uh, the federal government, or let's look at government. Because uh, the social contract simply endows the power that the that citizens endow and now they are power to government, then government in turn will now uh, protect them and at best act like a father. I would say that the that, uh, federal government did not also do well in some ways because if people are agitating at the beginning of this agitation, if government had, uh, had approached it via dialogue, maybe we wouldn't have gotten to the point that we are today because i still believe and i think that because if you look at the beginning point of ipod the most of the issues that they raised i think maybe through which they were able to convince so many people to have sympathy for them or to join them may have been issues of uh, inequality in the system or the, the, some of the policies of government that they felt may not uh, have favored a particular ethnic group. I think at that point, the federal government or government had at, at least intervened and uh, had a dialogue with them or set up a committee or a commission or whatever that uh, may reach out to them and uh, see how some of their uh, uh, challenges or some of the issues that they that they raised may be attended to I, I think they are human beings if you check as at that point i can tell you that uh, that the interest of those agitators at that point wasn't to bacchanize nigeria it was to find to see whether or not a federal government will look into the problem and uh, and again try to solve the problem Okay. We had a bigger challenge sometime in the past under the Yaradua admi administration when the Niger Delta was also a goal, making making so many demands. That government was able to, in fact, the, uh, the then vice president also had to go to the Greek and he met with them. Some of them were the new chartered flight, chartered flight to bring some of them to Abuja and negotiated with them. General government was able to dial tension. In this uh, one thing that we must know, and I think government must take that take that into cognizance, is that military or the use of force no longer no longer solve problem, no longer solves problem in any part of the world, even in US, even in UK and all kinds of or in all the other countries. Okay. Might or force no longer solves problem. Because at the end of the day, by the time you start using force maybe somehow uh, um, um, some of the security agencies may also be affected and the uh, so-called agitators may be affected at the end of the day the team will snowball into something that everybody will not uh, uh, that uh, the whole country will be running a task or finding solution to solve the problem let's hope that I it doesn't, let, that let's hope that that it doesn't get to that point us. let's hope but but let's see yeah. if we can establish contacts with me babade again um mr babade can you hear me yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. great let's talk about the the um, emer the emergence of a uh, sunday boho and the yoruba nation um and let's not yeah. forget sunday boho as as a person uh, of course, came out of the woodworks as a result of something that happened in the southwest. Now, we also have the Odua People's Con Congress, and now it's being called the Yoruba Nation. Uh, and the Are Ona Kankafo is also spearheading that. And he's been very vocal about some of the things that has happened in the country. So looking at all of these agitations and pairing it, because look, the, all, three peop all three regions are at uh, the, uh, uh, the United Nations right now protesting, and they're all protesting for one reason or the other. Some are asking that the president step down. Some are saying they want secession. The others are saying um, help the country, it's bleeding. I mean, they all have different... But there's one unifying voice, which is they're trying to be heard. 
Now, let's talk about the Yoruba nation. If the presidency is warning, is putting out this warning um, to the Yoruba nation, um, does it affect the agitations of the Yoruba nation? And is it everyone uh, that is from the Southwest that uh, agrees with or welcomes the idea of the Yoruba nation? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. What Nigeria is witnessing right now is uh, a government that is intensity. How do I mean? I always had the of uh, the most crazy, which is government of the people by the people and for the people to be changed when it comes to Nigeria issues. Because we, Nigeria, right? Because it's so, it's so painful and it's so. I think we lost him again. Unfortunately, uh, the connection is really bad and we're unable to hear him. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, but I think he was trying to make a point that what we're experiencing now is that the whole country is trying to be heard at the same time. And insecurity is obviously the order of the day. Uh, um, so now that the president is at the United Nations, I mean, we've seen people protest um, in London when the president is going for his medical um, checkups. We see people protesting. It doesn't really change anything. So be before we wrap up this conversation, because we're almost out of time, uh, do we see the government shifting grounds anytime soon with this message that has been put out? Because the government is citing the fact that in the south, the southeast, there have been government installations that have been targeted. INEC offices have been burned down. Police offices have been, uh, police stations have been burned down. A lot of havoc has been wrecked. And let's not also forget about the sit-at-home order, which has affected businesses, have affected people's means of livelihoods. And then there's an election coming uh, up in November uh, where some people have been told not to show up for the election. Uh, so looking at all of these things that the federal government is pointing to, they obviously seem like threats, but do we see the federal government shifting grounds anytime soon and bringing the people, like you said, to the table? This government I know of, I've not seen the government shifting ground. This government is doing everything possible to either keep you short, maim you, or you ki kill you. Well, that's, that's a heavy allegation to me. Well, who's the government killed? Well, government killed the people. How? The people that the government is ruling, that the government is ruling, uh, leading. As long as, as long as you are protesting, as we experience the dead answers in, in the year 2020, as long as you are protesting against the government, the government can send soldiers there and they add that despise them by the way the go, uh, in the process, the soldier will start using, using the uh, gun, um, ammunition to kill, just like what happened last year. So it has happened and it will happen. This government I'm saying, this government I know of is not ready to shift as long as their own image is intact. As long as they are protecting the image of the government, they are less interested in anything. In fact, the agitation we are talking about, um, the truth is, the real people who are agitating for Yoruba nations, they are not even in Nigeria. You get? That is why you see millions of them, thousands of them, protesting or doing a lot of things. They are actually doing it as a this nation. And the reason why the government is happy about this thing is this. The, 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 the Yoruba nation before now had, had the community to the United Nations to give a speech during the General Assembly. But I want to believe that it, it, it became impossible for them because the Vice President of the United Nations, or is it Vice President or Deputy Secretary General, uh, is a Nigerian, who yes. happens to be a Fulani woman, you go my would not def definitely would not allow that to say to her. And, and you're, you're just... I mean, you, you're just making this up because you obviously we, she we, she hasn't come out to say that she will oh, stop no, that. No, that's that is. So I this say, is, these are all speculations. Yes, I, that's why I use that word. Would not have allowed that. Hmm. You get, would not have allowed that to happen because he's representing the government, which is Nigeria, Nigerian government. So well, she's representing the United Nations. In, in the United Nations, definitely, is but as long as she's a Nigerian, she, the Nigerian blood will still be in her vein. Okay. In, in closing, Barista Chiku, um, like I asked him, uh, we see a lot of things happening in the country where, I mean, the country has a lot on its plate, including Mr. President. Um, and we're dealing with insecurity. We're dealing with the deep dive of the economy. Um, our Naira is nothing to, I mean, 
compared to the dollar. I think as at yesterday was 550. I mean, point to anything now. We really can't say that things are really going well for us. Even though um, statistics has it that the number of people that have been abducted or killed lately has reduced. But then the elections are just around the corner. And, and I've asked somebody this question before. Do we see government changing or moving, you know, in a direction that might want to appease the people at least, being that they would be wanting our votes in a few months? I think I think government will shift grounds. Uh, once they get, that's why programs like like what like this, where I, I, I think uh, should be encouraged, so that government will also get ideas from people. I think government will will uh, will shift grounds. What is needed now is for the federal government to set up a truce a truce commission or committee. Let that committee tour the uh, geopolitical zones, especially the ones that are that are agitating. And uh, at least for the first time, let them itemize, even if it's uh, a list of one to ten. Let them itemize the reason behind the agitations or the reasons behind the protests. Then, based on uh, on the report of the truth. Uh, commission, commission or committee, federal government can move on from there and see whether they can enlarge it to include the principal actors uh, uh, or the people that are championing uh, uh, these uh, these agitations. Then, on the strength of that, I think that uh, if federal government does that, then we can say that the uh, government has shifted grants and that uh, I can tell you. We may make progress. We may make progress because when you ignore people uh, like that, you are, you are, what you are telling them is that they are insignificant. And when you say people are insignificant, uh, I think they will want to maybe through a lawful means or so show you that they are significant. Let the federal government reach out to uh, uh, middle middle belt, reach out to southwest, reach out to southeast, reach out to south south reach out to all the people, even the Northwest and all that, reach out to them. Let's have a discussion. This nation belongs to us. We have no other nation. Mm. I think if federal government does that, we might be able to dial tension. Then finally, the rhetorics from the president's media people, uh, to me, needs to need to change. The, the way they, they are uh, doing most of the comments that uh, that have been binded in the press uh, or linked to them, I do not think that will engender, it will not engender unity. Even the, using the language that uh, Yoruba nation or whatever will be judged by the company, how can one man be talking about a, 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 a people that, uh, that uh, uh, from statistics are well over 40, 50 million? You don't talk to people like that. Let those, uh, that uh, uh, rhetorics or the language or whatever that is coming from the handlers of Mr. President and all the other people, let them tone it down. Okay. Let them not inflame this society the more. Nigeria okay. has suffered so much within the past three, four years. At the international okay. level, Nigeria is like a pariah state. Nigeria is no longer reckoned with. Even in Africa, even in West Africa, how long shall we continue like this? Okay. They need to have a change of heart. Stop talking the way they are talking. That will not help us. Okay. Well, Lee Babade is an international journalist. Obina Chiku is a, broad, uh, is a barrister at law. And Babashala Debui is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and when we return, we will discuss the ruling APC persuading former President Goodluck Jonathan to join its party. How true is it? We'll be right back.